Now we're going to be looking at the same structures, the medial collateral ligament, and now the, uh, a lot of times when you're set up that way, you can see a visualization of the <clears throat> meniscus tooth, medial meniscus, okay? So in this case, I'm going to flex that knee to about 30 degrees, place that transducer, try to find that, that joint space. MCL is going to be that really bright band underneath it, and then you'll see the femoral condyle and the tibia, look for that pizza wedge shape for the meniscus as well, okay? After that, I will roll the person over slightly and I'm going to trace down the pes tendons, okay? So my, I'm gonna go all the way down to where they insert onto the tibia. Now, if somebody's dealing with like an active bursitis, it will show more, okay? So remember, bursa is gonna be dark, it's gonna be anechoic. Usually for bursa sacs, they're really hard to visualize if somebody's not dealing with any type of active fluid. So most bursal sacs should be about two millimeters or less, and that's hard to visualize when it's compressing between tendons. But if somebody's dealing with an active bursitis, it'll be larger than two millimeters, and it'll be dark, be anechoic. And a good way to know is that what I'm looking at, especially in this case, if you add a little pressure, sometimes a transducer alone, you have to be careful that the weight of it will push and flatten that out. But if you're suspecting fluid, sometimes you can compress it, make it go away, take the pressure off, and you'll see it actually come back because it's contained um, in like a little bubble, okay? So those are our structures that we're gonna look at from the medial portion. All right, Get a little bit more gel here. There we go. Okay. So again, I started here, I recognize bone, I'm trying to figure out, okay, where's my orientation? I slide down, I'm using the joint space now as my reference point. I know I've got femur to the left, I've got tibia to my right, and that bright tissue that's laying across, there's that MCL, okay? So that ligament's gonna be super bright. You can see the shadowing or the shading of the meniscus right underneath it, okay? So again, remember a brush test for intraarticular fluid. We primarily look at that medial side of the knee. This is the one location I do a lot. I can trace this down all the way. You can see that bright tissue on top of that tibia, that, that is all MCL. And that's a broad, flat band. So me, to really assess that, I'm going to go posterior and scan a lot of those fibers. I'm gonna scan up a little bit more superior so I can see any break or there's any tearing or loss of those tight striations, okay? Again, this is somebody I've already done a clinical exam on. I've done some valgus stress, maybe some moving valgus stress tests. If I want to do that dynamic assessment, I'll go over the joint space, and then I'll have them extend their knee slowly, and I'm looking for that little pocket of fluid to push out and to bubble out, and that would be that would be helpful for me to know, understand that something's going on, on inside that capsule, okay? Interstitial swelling that's outside of that capsule, it's not gonna move around at all, okay? So MCL, joint space, try to get visualization of that medial meniscus, and then trace it down right to the edge of that tibial tuberosity, right on your tibia. Now I'm looking at those tendons. So I see the tibia there, those tendons, that's gonna be the bright tissue that's on top, okay? Again, that little dark area right there, that bursa sac lies, lies right underneath it, and it's not gonna be visualized right now because it just don't have any fluid, okay? But it's gonna be right underneath those tendons, right on the edge of the bone. If it's swollen, you'll see it puff up. You'll see it like a little bit of a black bubble, and I believe I have that in your, uh, one of your pathology slides as well.